Today on episode number 100 of the podcast, we're having a discussion about raising sighted kids as a VIP with two special guests who I'm sure will have a lot to say. What's up, VIPs? Welcome to Life After Sight Loss Radio, the podcast helping you discover life after sight loss. My name is Derek. I am your resident VIP, aka visually impaired person. And joining me across the table, as always, is our resident sighted supporter, my lovely wife, April. Hey there. All right, dear. Woo! It is episode 100. Wow. I can't believe it. Uh, it's only taken me like five years. To get only? To get or yeah. I can't remember. I think the... I think 2017, maybe. I was looking back. I can't remember when the first episode came out. I should have had all these dates. But it was a long time ago. Yeah. And uh, I took definitely a hiatus uh, at different times with Mm -hmm. different reasons and different things. But here we are, episode 100. I think you joined me. Well, you joined me for a few, uh, you know, towards the beginning. And then I think you started joining me full time, maybe episode 75 or so. If you say so. Uh, Maybe it was after that. I don't remember. Maybe it was 85. Me either. Who knows? Anyway, uh, you've been with me for a while, and I think it's helped to change the dynamic of the podcast. Um, It was fun by myself and some other guests. But having a dialogue, sharing your side, the side of supporter side is always good. Yeah. And I think that's really helped. I've noticed the comments that come in. Um, You know, there's usually somebody saying, thank you for the uh, both side discussion. Right. Whether it's about a VIP or a side of supporter topic specifically, Mm -hmm. we get, you know, both sides of that. So uh, I don't know. How's it been for you? You're not necessarily, this isn't what you do. You know, you don't like to talk behind microphones. So I don't Uh, like to talk behind microphone. I don't like to talk in front of people. I don't like to talk a whole lot unless I really know you. (laughs) So consider yourselves privileged. So I put you on the spot here when I said, Hey, let's do this together. What was your thought? Were you like, Oh, I don't know about that. I kind of thought it would just be a few episodes and it wouldn't be any big deal. And and I'd kick you off again? Is that what you said? Not necessarily <laughs> kick me off. You just wouldn't need me. So mm. I didn't, I just didn't think it would go this long, I guess, with me being here as well. But I've enjoyed it. It's sure. it's interesting to watch you like get everything set up mm-hmm. and just right and have, you know. And stress out know, about it. And stress out about it. Yes, <laughs> you do that as well. But um, yeah, it's just been really interesting to watch you do it. And I like being a part of it because I think being a sighted supporter is um, undervalued in a lot of mm-hmm. um, realms. And I think that giving a voice to the sighted supporter is so very important. Mm-hmm. And also not only to people who, you know, are sighted and don't necessarily have a VIP in their life, but also to the VIP to have them see a side of the sighted supporter emotions and, um, you know, feeling of guilt sometimes, you know, whatever it might be that we have those emotions too. And sometimes we are slow to share them because we don't want to cause any more, you know, I don't know, stress on you. Yeah, absolutely. So I think it's been great for both sides to be brought up. Yeah. I think it's, we have said that both sides are important, you know, and today we're going to give a similar side, but from a different perspective. Right. uh, Because we're talking about raising sighted kids as a visually impaired person. Yeah. So um, our special guests today are actually going to be (laughs) our children. Yeah. Um, I have never had them. I don't, I don't know. I don't like to promote them on the internet. Yeah. Um, I don't like to have them out there, but I thought, you know, we discussed it and I thought, you know what? Today's the day. So what's going to happen here uh, before we jump into things? First of all, let me say this. If you've been listening to the podcast for however long, two episodes, a hundred episodes, <laughs> I would love to hear from you. So yeah. normally you hear that and you're like, that's nice. I would take time right now, wherever you are, and send me an email, lifeaftersightloss at gmail.com. Uh, you can comment on this video if you're watching it. Uh, whatever it is, I want to hear from you. And I want to know how long have you been listening? What's something that you've taken away from the podcast? Because because here's the thing, whether it's a thousand people listening or two people listening, the impact, I want to know about it because yeah. it's great for us to hear the stories, the the things you've learned, the things you've liked, the things that have impacted you, because that helps us not only know we're doing a good job, uh-huh. but give us reasons to keep going and more topics and that sort of thing. Yes, so, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'd love to hear from you again, lifeaftersightloss at gmail.com. Comment on the video if you're watching it. Uh, let us know. You can also reach out on Instagram. Instagram as well at life after sight loss, which <laughs> if you forget all that, we'll talk about it at the end as well. Yep. Uh, so again, we're going to talk about uh, raising sighted kids. Now I have a list of questions that I'm going to ask the kids uh, when they come on here in just a bit. Um, but 
from your perspective, uh, how have things been different? Because you're obviously, you know, raising kids from a sighted perspective. Mm -hmm. But any specific thing that you can recognize, like, oh, here's how we do things. Because one of the questions I'm going to ask them is, what what are the things we do differently as a family? Uh, For example, I know... um, my son was talking. Well, I don't want to spoil anything he says. I don't know. I don't know what he's going to say. So we'll wait. wait uh, but he was he was talking about a specific thing that we do that other families don't. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. I hadn't thought about it. So have you noticed? Is there anything that pops into mind that's like, oh yeah, here's how we're doing things differently because I'm visually impaired? Uh, no. <laughs> that's probably the wrong answer. That is the wrong answer. Wrong what the answer. Heck? <laughs> Well, I'm sure, you know, there's the obvious things like we have to get transportation, you know, from other people because I'm visually impaired and things like that. But, um, oh, and I get the kids will have a whole nother perspective. I'm sure sure, because 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 they're kids. Here's the thing is that I am like, this is, this is us, you know, like the two of us, we've done this for so long Mm -hmm. and I don't go with other families to see how other families do things very often. You know, we might have lunch or go to small group or something like that. But at the same time, we're still together. Whereas the kids, they go to school now and Mm -hmm. they go to their friends' houses and they go on vacation with friends as well. So they do things with other families for longer periods of time. Mm, So they definitely have a little bit more exposure to how, what a quote, normal family would have. (laughs) Whatever that is. (laughs) Whatever that is. Yeah. Well, and this is our normal. Yeah. Like, you know, this is our, this is what we've done for the whole time. So then to think outside of, I don't know, think back to my childhood and how we may have done things when I was a kid. Well, first of all, that was a really long time ago. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. Yeah. And so I'm just so far removed from a completely sighted family Mm -hmm. that I I just can't think of anything. Well, and and now even when we do, like we go visit friends or family or something and sight loss comes up, like, for example, if I need help getting something or, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever, and the kids help me or you help me, it's just such common thing. You know, it's just if if I I ask them a question, the kids don't even think about it. Yeah. You know, I mean, I guess you mentioned getting something and I think about like we have this really great pizza buffet lunch Mm -hmm. that we go to. Mm -hmm. And so like you'll stand next to me and I'll fill your plate with salad and then I go get the pizza Mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe normal families wouldn't do that. But I mean, again, it's just something that we do. Yeah, it's just things we do. Well, and I think that's, we reckon, I'm interested to see how the kids, you know, think about it because we think about it so normally. I mean, we've had it since I was 18, since we've been married the whole time. And now I will say the kids have only known me as a visually impaired person. Right. Right. And so it's not like... They're like, oh, he was sighted for 10 years and then I lost it, which may be some experience of the people listening to the podcast. Yeah, absolutely. But for us, the kids have always, you know, known Mm -hmm. and it's always been a part of their life. So I'll I'll be interested to see their perspective on things. Um, But anyway, (laughs) I guess we better just jump into the children and see what they have to say uh, rather than speculating on what they have to say. So uh, April is going to jump out here in just a minute. Uh, Somebody's going to jump in her place and talk for a little bit. Then another person will jump in her place. (laughs) And that should be interesting conversation. And then she'll come back and we'll wrap it up. So let's go ahead now and jump right into our first special guest for this episode, number 100. All right, so here we are. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, my name's Noah. Um, I am your son, if you didn't know that. <laughs> oh, thank God. That's uh, good to know. Yeah. Uh, how old are you? Uh, I th- believe I'm 17. 17. Yeah. And you've lived here the whole time? No, well, I've <laughs> lived with you the whole time, there you not go. in this house. <laughs> All right, so I've got a list of questions here. We're just going to roll through. All right. If there's anything else you want to mention, of course you can, but we'll just start with these questions. All right, here we go. When do you first remember realizing that I couldn't see? Um, I got to say, I don't remember realizing you couldn't see. I, I think it was just a thing throughout my life, but I do remember a period of my life, maybe in, while I was in elementary school, where I just kind of thought, you were faking it um, <laughs> <laughs> where I would just, uh, I'd be like, no, he could see me. Right. Yeah. And so, um, and you know, at that time you don't really think anything of it, but whenever that went away, um, it's probably the, the, at the time where I realized it was real. And you could, gotcha. So was there anything that made you realize that I couldn't see like, Oh, eh, maybe he's not faking it. 
I don't think there's a specific incident. I think it was just like growing up and realizing, you know what? Why would he not drive if he? <laughs> yeah. Why? <laughs> why would I be faking this yeah, the whole time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. That's fair. So there wasn't necessarily a time where we sat down and said, "Hey, um, no, you know, whatever." All right. So let's move on to the next one. All right. Uh, what do your friends think about having a visually impaired father? My fr- my closest friends, they they don't think anything of it really because they know it's the normal. Oh um, yeah. They uh, so we make jokes about it just like we do. Sure. Um, and it, you know the only time they really know about it is whenever audio description. It comes on on the TV and I have oh, to turn it off. Yeah, <laughs> and Joe always is like, "Ah, oh, what is going on? What is this narrator yeah. describing everything um, on the TV for?" Yeah. yeah, but that's really the only time um, that they care about. It. I think my friends' parents care more than my friends do. Like, oh yeah, that- um, sometimes like they're all very nice and they're like, "Oh, do you need a ride somewhere?" Whenever I couldn't drive, sure. Do you need a ride somewhere? Sometimes it's like, "Oh, it's nice." Other times it's just annoying. It's like, <laughs> Yeah, I can do it. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I got it. Thanks. Especially when they don't laugh at my jokes. Oh yeah, my that's gotta be jokes. hard. Yes, yeah. like this is a good blind joke. Yeah, like this is funny. Yeah, yeah, that's that's tough. So, would you say your friends like if it comes up because of a specific thing, maybe they talk about it, but otherwise, it's like just normal. It's just normal. I I think it, it, me and my best friend we kid about it all the time, and we yeah. go back and forth, and it, it's just it's so normal that we don't actually think about it. Gotcha. What is a specific blind-related memory that you have? I know which one Aubrey's going to tell. So, oh, okay. So okay. I picked a different one. It was when my friend came over and his dad was talking to you at the front door. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, you, of course, he was a shorter man. Oh, yeah. So it was hard to tell where his eyes were sure. for somebody who can't see. Yeah. Um, so you never made full eye contact with him. Uh, and he thought you were on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> so uh and uh i do remember that yeah <laughs> and then you know the friend had to tell him you know look hey he can't see he's, so he's not on drugs yeah. i promise <laughs> yeah that's what a mess yeah i do remember actually i remember you telling me that after the fact yeah you were like you know hey guess what mm-hmm. <laughs> i thought you were on drugs yeah so anyway all right next question what are things that we do as a family that other families don't? In the grand scheme of things, we probably don't do stuff that's all that different. We don't have multiple cars. Well, that, until I started driving, we didn't have multiple cars. Yeah. We just had one, which I didn't know having more than one was super normal. <laughs> um, you know, like all my friends, their parents each have a car right. because they need to get to they work. They drive, yeah. Um, but that wasn't a thing at our house because why would we have two cars and i remember when i was little or two i i would say like oh why don't we get another car but realizing now there would be no purpose of that (laughs) mom would just have to switch in between cars yeah for fun i don't know like you know so maybe when you guys are out of the house we'll get a sports car so you can drive around yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah we also if we're playing cards Mm. uh we Mm -hmm. say the cards out loud um, that is true. Like uh, what? Uh, Uno is that one? We of play. The, uh, yeah, if yeah. we play Uno or this game called Crazy Eights, yep, um, yep. you lay down the card. If it's a six of spades, you have to say six of spades. That's true. So, yeah, yeah. And and do you find like I think you ran into that recently with a friend? Like, yes. You're like you guys don't call out the cards. Yeah, <laughs> I was over there and uh, they, they were just playing it normally and nobody said a thing, and I was like. Do you guys know what card it is? Because nobody said anything. <laughs> that's a, that's another thing. We don't have to, like, e- even though it's kind of for you, the qu- like saying it out loud is so you can know what card it is. Right. I don't have to pay attention <laughs> to looking at the card. That's I can true. just hear what it is. So it's, yeah. That's true. I never thought about that. Like, all of a sudden you're like, Oh no, what's going on? I missed the last five cards because yeah. nobody called it out. <laughs> that's funny. How am I a different parent? Because I'm visually impaired. I don't think your personality or your parenting is any different than anybody else's parenting, besides that you have your own personal way. Um, Sure. But things like, as a father, um, I know one of my friends, he plays catch with his dad a lot. Oh, gotcha. And sometimes you threw the football at me, but... (laughs) and so that's <laughs> I love that you said threw the football at me <laughs> so, somewhere to, to my voice yeah. <laughs> yeah no but um and 
Not that that's something we would do. Like right. <laughs> neither of us would <laughs> really right. enjoy yeah. playing catch. Yeah. Somebody would get mad. Yeah, and just, no, but yeah. that's just something we don't do. So yeah. um, that's different. And I didn't. Know, I thought it was like a hallmark a hallmark thing to play catch with your dad. <laughs> but then I found a friend. And sure enough, he plays catch with his dad frequently. And I'm sure like, enough, I didn't know that was real. <laughs> yeah, so. well, especially because it didn't happen here. And then, like you said, you saw it on a Hallmark movie right, or whatever. Right, right. That's funny. I do remember like throwing uh, something, you know, towards mm-hmm. you and then you would have to run it back, yeah, you know, yeah. or roll it yeah. and hopefully I would find it. Right. So, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's true. No throwing. <laughs> no throwing at me, please. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, goodness. All right. What's one negative and one positive of me being visually impaired? A positive 100% of the time is getting on the plane first. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do when I have to get on the fl- plane with all these other sighted people. <laughs> Normal sighted yes, people. And, uh. Oh, goodness. Uh, for those of you who are listening to this, Noah's describing a time we go to the airport, especially the one here locally. We will go in and inevitably we start down that security line and they'll see my cane or the dog or whatever and pull us out into the special line because, I don't know, they feel bad that I can't see it. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess. And it's... Now, not every airport's like that. We went to Orlando, and it was just jam-packed. They didn't give a crap about us. But, yeah, a lot of times they will, you know, let us go get that special perk yep. for sure. That's, yeah. that's always good. I feel bad for you in the future. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to be real mad the first time I have to get on the plane by myself. All by yourself. That's yeah. sad. So that's one positive. Yeah. What about a negative? Um, a negative would be you not being able to fully enjoy, like, watching me do things. Mm. So I play lacrosse, um, and... You know, you're not able to really see the uh, see me play. Really, right. mom describes it to you. You know what's going on. Sure, sure. Um, and we take some videos, and you can watch those. Mm-hmm. Um, my first goal that I scored. Right. I don't think mom really saw it either very well. So yeah. it's kind of <laughs> you guys kind of yeah. showed up, and it was there. Yeah. But um, like you couldn't see that, but you yeah. knew it was happening. So I think sure. that would be a negative. Um, yeah. I also would work a lot. So, mm. um, and that's a little less you can feel that and you mm-hmm. know handle it so um that's not as as bad as lacrosse would be gotcha i wouldn't say it's necessarily bad because it's been there my entire life so i don't even see it as a too much of a negative gotcha so yeah so adaptation has sort of right you know changed how your perspective is that makes sense uh so what's a piece of advice you'd give to a kid whose parent may be losing their sight i gotta tell you i don't Anybody whose parent is losing their sight, I wouldn't know how to handle fully Mm. because I've never had a parent lose their sight. I've had a parent who just doesn't see. That's true. That's true. um, I've always been visually impaired. Right. Yeah. And so I, the the advice I would give somebody would be to adapt, you know, to know you love the person. They are are your parent. Uh, Hopefully you love them. Um, But to adapt and that's kind of a life lesson in itself also sure, sure. you know take try to if they're going to be struggling as well so um mm-hmm. may it be patient with them as well because mm-hmm. uh, you know they m- might lo- they're going to if they're losing their sight they're not going to be able to drive soon right so yeah. um you're going to lose if you can't drive yourself you're going to lose that yeah. uh, piece of it so mm-hmm. yeah. yeah yeah i think there's a lot of pieces that uh, take place you know at different stages and you know, like you said Pretty soon they're going to not going to be able to drive, as you mentioned, not going to be able to see you yeah. on the field or right. um, look at your pictures or things like that. Yeah. Uh, I remember one thing you guys used to do, and I I think it was just it started becoming habit because it was what it was. But it's like you had to describe your pictures to me. Yeah. So like you come home and be like, look at what I drew, and immediately you'd be like, it's a thing with this you know colors I use right. whatever. Right. Right. And so there's going to probably be. Like you said, adaptations they're going to have to make. It's just going to be a challenge because not only is the child going through something, but the parents going through something, the other parents going through something. You know, Correct. everybody's facing it. It's going to be hard for their family for sure. Yeah, and I think another big uh, thing is your parent will probably start using a cane or get sure. a guide dog. Yeah, um, and in public, that is hard to adapt to. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. I've had to adapt to that because it, you used a cane for a long time, mm-hmm. but then you got Koa. So, right. Um, yeah. So that's just another thing you're going to have to learn. They're, <laughs> you have to learn they're not looking at you, they're looking at the dog <laughs> or the cane. That's true. So, I was going to say, is, is one, 
uh, was it harder to adapt to the cane? I mean, you're different ages, so yeah. was that played a factor? But is it worse? I don't know, in quotes, air quotes, worse than the one with the cane versus the dog? Well, the dog attracts a lot more attention because nobody wants to call a cane cute. That's true. Um, that is fair. So and that would be weird. The cane, the cane <laughs> is kind of fun because you can knock stuff over with it. Sure, you know, sure. If you hit like one of those wet floor signs, yeah, just a lot of right noise. Over. Yeah, a lot of noise. Um, but. The dog is, there's a lot more people who actually say something. Yeah, a lot yeah. more attention. Right. Absolutely. Well, that's, such such is life, I guess. What kind of breed is your cane? <laughs> what I've kind of breed heard, is your Never cane? heard that. So. <laughs> if somebody asked me that, I'd be like, I'm, I got to go. I can't talk to you anymore. Uh, all right. Any final thoughts as we wrap this up? No, I, no? I think it's, it's normal for me to sure. have this kind of life. Um, so I couldn't think of you know, anything very out of the ordinary. Yeah. Um, it's, so it's, yeah. it's, uh, I, I was talking to mom earlier and we commented how, uh, you, um, you know, like our life, our mm-hmm. lifestyle is obviously affected by sight loss, right? but it's such, it's normal for you. Yeah. You know, it's, it is the normal lifestyle. Other people have their normal, which we would say, Oh, they're normal. You know, like yeah. they don't have a, yeah. they have two sided parents, but, this is our normal life and right. that's just how it works. Yeah. So, um, and like we said, you have had this the whole time. Like Correct. I've never been sighted and then blind as long as you've been alive. Yeah. So and you've adapted to it and you're right. just used to it, which I think is evident by the fact you didn't have a specific moment of like, Oh, you're blind. Uh, thank you for telling me, you know, right. Cases. Yeah. It was so. just always that thing. Like, hmm. All right. Well, uh, that wraps up all my questions. So thank you for your insight. Of course. All right, we're on to guest number two. Why don't you introduce yourself? I don't know what to say. <laughs> Aubrey. There you go. This, wow, this is not that challenging. It's your name. You know who you are. How old are you? 13. There you go. All right. All right, I'm going to go through the series of questions here. You're going to answer them to the best of your ability. This sounds like an interrogation yes. a little bit. All right, ready? Yeah. Okay. When do you first remember realizing that I couldn't see? I, I feel like I always knew like i just knew like is, there wasn't a time where i was like oh my god he can't see what like i just always knew <laughs> yeah okay that's fair just i think kind of like uh i'm adopted and i always knew i was adopted yeah. there wasn't like they sat me down at 16 i was like you're adopted yeah so what do your friends think about me being visually impaired they ask questions all the time they're just like how can he do this and like i've told them like we're going to see a movie or something and they're like how does he watch the movie <laughs> and i'm just like I explain how, like, he gets a little thingy and it explains it to him. Yes. Audio description. Yeah, that's what it's called. So, do um, they think it's weird that I am, blind? like, are they like, that's weird? I don't think they think, I mean, they've never told me that they think it's weird. Sure. But they might not, like, understand it completely, I feel like. Gotcha. So, they do at least ask questions about yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. What's a specific blind-related memory that you have? <laughs> we were at, um... Becca's house, oh, and yeah. you ran into the glass door. <laughs> <laughs> so let me describe this for people that are listening. So uh, we had friends that had this sauna thing downstairs, and it it was it had wood, but there was a glass door and and like windows. And were you guys like playing inside of it or something? Yeah. And so I wanted to peek into the doorway to see what they were doing, but the door was shut and it was glass. Bang my head right on it. <laughs> And you laughed a lot, I'm sure. It yeah. was so funny. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's one of those memories that at the time it was not funny. Like it was funny to you, mm-hmm. but not to me. And so, but now I can laugh about it. Yeah. So yeah, those things happen quite a bit. All right. What things do we do that other families don't? I don't know. Like, I feel like, I mean, we call each other stupid names all the time. But is that because we're blind or I'm blind or is that because we're just weird people? That's just because we're weird people. Right. So what are things that we do because I'm blind that other families don't? We have to like ask other people to pick me up from places. Transportation. Yes. If yes. Noah can't pick me up. Right. Even, and when Noah, before he could drive, we had to uh, yeah. ask for transportation. Okay. Noah mentioned uh, we have to say the cards out loud. Like when yeah. we play Crazy Eights yeah. or Uno, it's say like Six of Hearts, something like that. Yeah. Um, do you think about that when we're doing it? I, I it's oh, It's just like oh, you have to do this. Like, it's just normal for me. So I don't really think about it. I don't really realize. Yeah. Um, I guess if you were playing cards with somebody else and they weren't, 
calling out the car. You'd be like, what are you doing? Why do yeah. <laughs> like sometimes I'll be playing with like people at church or something uh-huh. and I'll be like, for your turn. <laughs> <laughs> like what? What is happening? What? Oh, that's funny. Uh, so anything we do like that, it's normal to you. So you don't even think about it being different yeah. than another family. Yeah. Gotcha. That makes sense. How am I a different parent because I'm visually impaired? Or am I a different parent because I'm visually impaired? I mean, you're not really a different parent other than like, you can't take me places, which is just whatever. We always find a way around it. Sure. Yeah, if we absolutely. don't, well, we don't. <laughs> but we always have, right? <laughs> yeah. We always figure it out. Uh, and I'm not different. I'm not a different parent than mom necessarily. I mean, we have our differences because yeah. we're different people, but I'm not different simply because I'm blind. No. Okay. Uh, what's one negative and one positive of me being visually impaired? I mean, I feel like if you could see, I feel like you'd still make jokes like you do. Like, sure. But I feel like you grew up like after you, obviously after you lost your sight, Uh you took things differently. I don't know how to explain it. (laughs) (laughs) So I, we make jokes a lot, you know, with our family, you, me, Noah, everybody else. Yeah. We make jokes. And so do you think uh, being blind has given me a better sense of humor because I've learned to laugh at the situation? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what's a negative thing? Like if you drop something, like you don't know. Like if you knock a cup of water over. Uh, yes. You don't know and it might ruin things. That is true. That did happen recently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A clear glass on a table full of water. Not good. Not good. Yes. If you're listening to this, do not leave out a clear glass on the table. Uh, All right. That makes sense. Um, Okay. So what's a piece of advice you might give to a kid whose parent is losing their sight? Just act normal. Just like, I mean, don't act like nothing's happening, but don't like take it like, oh my God, my whole life is going to change. Yeah. Just like, it's, it'll obviously be different, but it'll turn out the same way. Like it'll be the same. It's just a few things have changed. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. Any final thoughts? Not really. Not really. That's all you got, huh? Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, uh, just as a recap, uh, you know, you're 13. You have uh, always known me as visually impaired, mm-hmm. and so a lot of the things that you experience are just normal. It's our normal. Yeah. Whereas other people have, we would say they have a quote normal life because they have two sided parents. Yeah. Um, for example, Noah said that uh, he didn't realize people had two cars. Because we only had one car. Yeah. Know. Like, that's um, just weird. Yeah. Like, why do they have two? It's like, oh, because yeah. they have two-sided people who go to work. Yeah. So, yeah. So, everything else, though, has been, you know, this whatever we do that's different is not different to us. Yeah. Because it's normal for us. Yeah. All right. Well, any other final things you want to say? Nope. Feel good about it? Yeah. All right. Thanks for being here. You're welcome. <laughs> And there you have it, my son, my daughter, their perspective on being a sighted kid being raised by a VIP. Wow. Uh, yeah, I, I can't believe I got them on the podcast. That's, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how all their friends really enjoy this episode. We'll see. <laughs> all right, gang. Well, let's go ahead. We've got a question for you. What is something that you have learned from a kid. You know, I think my children, uh, they speak certain things and it's like, wow, I had never thought about it from that perspective. Or, oh, that's really interesting. I, I didn't realize that's how you thought about it. And I have learned things from them. And so, what's one thing you have learned from a child? Could be your own child, could be a niece or a nephew or a uh, family friend, something like that. Because out of the mouth of babes, right. as we hear. So, what's something you've learned? I'd love to hear about it and I know others would as well. You can comment on the video if you're watching and you can also send an email to Life after sight loss at gmail.com. All right, before we get to our quote, we've got a few housekeeping items for you. If you are watching us on YouTube, make sure to give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss another episode. And if you're listening to the audio version, make sure to subscribe in your favorite podcast app and consider giving us a rating and a review. Also, we'd love to hear from you. Your thoughts, your questions, all that good stuff. You can send an email to lifeaftersightloss at gmail.com. And make make sure that you follow us on Instagram at lifeaftersightloss. That's right. All right. So we've got all the things out of the way. We've heard from the kids. Let's jump into our quote of the week. 
You live in a family and your family is your training ground for learning to get along with other people in life. James J. Christ, PhD. So you live in a family yep. and your family is your training ground. Mm-hmm. It's the train now, don't get me wrong, once you leave the house, you have other training grounds. Absolutely. You know, in other areas and friends and so forth. But your family, that core family is training you to just get along with other people, learn from other people. And our kids' training is different than other people's training, if you will. You Can know. we say that it's specialized? Yeah, we have specialized <laughs> training in our house. That's right. <laughs> Uh, it's just that, you know, they grew up, I, I, I remember, for example, um, what, they rode the bus with a child, I believe, who had a deaf parent. And so that child would sign to uh, the parent getting off the bus and things like that. And my kids always found it interesting. I don't think they realized that they had a parent who had something else going right. on. Because they were like, look at that. Oh, that's that's different than us. Not realizing that we're different than others. Right. You know, because yeah. it's just normal for us. Yeah. But their training is just different. So when they encounter somebody who is either visually impaired or has something else going on, hopefully they're going to have compassion, understanding. They're going to be able to be those wonderful adults, not simply because yeah. I'm blind, but because we've raised them to be those kinds of people. Yeah. All right. Well, that's episode 100. Woo! Woo! So I have <laughs> plans for episodes 101, 102, and on hopefully in the future. Um, but that's episode 100. And it's so exciting to think we've made it this far. It's amazing. And I want to thank everybody for listening. I know I, yes, I watched thank the you so numbers. Much. Yeah, absolutely. I watched the numbers. I watched the view counts on YouTube. And we don't have millions of views. But every view I see, every listen I uh, watch, it's like, that's a person. That's yep. a person who chose to listen to this, to watch this, and to glean some sort of insight from what we have to say. Yeah. Uh, we're not, uh, I know we joked about it, but we're not specialists. We're just, <laughs> you know, a husband and a wife trying to figure this out. And we're doing our best over here. And we're so glad that we could be part of your lives on a regular basis. Thank you so much for listening wherever you are. And until next time, remember that sight loss isn't the end. It's, it's just, just the, the beginning. beginning. My name's Derek. I'm Noah. And I'm Aubrey. And I'm April. And we'll see you in, in the, the next, next one. one.